Hey everybody, it's me, Lone, back with a Fallout 76 video. Please mind my voice, it's a bit croaky today. I don't have COVID, thankfully, but I just don't feel 100%. So today, we're going to do a video on the Hellcat Power Armor in the game. This is the brand new Power Armor in Fallout 76, which is being introduced with Steel Rain, releasing on July 7. And today, I want to do a full guide video on this Power Armor, telling you everything you need to know, including about its mods, stats, effects, etc. So if this video does help you, please like it. I would really appreciate it. That always helps with the YouTube algorithm them please subscribe if you're new and with all that out of the way let's get to the video okay we're in the game and this is it this is the brand new hellcat power armor and i gotta say in terms of design it's one of my personal favorites for me at least it's even up there with the c65 and even the tesla power armor in fallout 3 which is my current favorite so yeah let me tell you everything you need to know about the hellcat power armor first of all how do you actually get it well that's quite simple all you need to do is complete the entirety of Steel Rain after it releases, as I said, on July 7. And that begins with a Knight's Penance, and it ends with the Catalyst Quest. So once you complete the Catalyst, you will get the entire set of Hellcat Power Armor, in addition to the ability to craft the pieces at a Power Armor Station later, later if you decide to. Now, of course, to start Steel Rain, you need to have completed Steel Dawn, which is the previous Brotherhood of Steel quest line released last year. If you haven't done that yet, I'm assuming that most of you have, but if you haven't, that quest line begins at level 20 or after level 20 with the Welcome to the Neighborhood quest. You start that, you go through it, and then it ends with the Best Defense quest. So once you complete the Best Defense and then you update your game with Steel Rain on July 7, you should have a Knight's Pendant in your Pip-Boy. So then you go through Steel Rain, you complete the Catalyst, and you will get the Hellcat Power Armor. So in terms of effort, it does not take long to get the Hellcat Power Armor, so I would say for sure it is worth it um, to, to get in the game, and especially just to experiment with because of this special effect that it has that I think is going to attract some of your attention. But first of all, let's talk about the pure stats of this Power Armor. Now, each of the, of the limbs of this Power Armor, the helmet, the left arm, left leg, right arm, and right leg, they each have a damage resistance, or DR, of 68, an energy resistance or ER48 and a radiation resistance or RR48. And then the torso is a bit more than that. The DR is 96, the ER is 80, and the RR is also 80. So overall, in terms of the stats of this power armor as a whole, the Hellcat power armor has a DR of 436, an ER of 320, and an RR of 320 as well. So just to compare that to the T65, which if you don't know, I would say is currently the best power armor in the game in terms of pure resist resistances, excluding radiation resistance. So the T65 has a DR of 565, an ER of 470, and an RR of 470. So in terms of pure stats, yes, the T65 is better. However, the Hellcat has this special effect, as you can see at the top of the screen right now, where each of the pieces reduce incoming ballistic damage by 2%. And these stack, so 2%, 2%, 2%, 2%. That's 10% reduction in incoming ballistic damage in total. Some people say that the helmet as well gives you that 2% reduction. I don't believe it does because it doesn't say so here. And I didn't no notice much difference with the helmet on or off. So I believe it is 10% in total. But if I'm wrong, it would be 12%. Let me know if I am wrong in the comments below. Angry Turtle, feel free to test it if you want to. Whether it's 10% or 12%, that is fairly good. The reason why that, that is um, effective is because generally in the game, a percentage-based reduction in damage is better than simple damage resistance. So this special effect of the Hellcat is going to maybe sway some of you if you are currently using a T65, but let me break it down a little bit more. So in terms of radiation res resistance and energy resistance, of course the T65 is better. And you can't buy energy resistance especially a lot in the game. Um, now of course you have that legendary perk card called Electrical Absorption, which kind of negates the need to have such high energy resistance to some extent, but still the T65 is better in both of those regards. So when it comes to damage, that's when it becomes a little bit more complicated because if you don't know, all power armor in Fallout 76 has an inherent damage reduction of 42% as a whole. That includes the Hellcat and also the T65. So you need to keep that in mind when it comes to damage reduction because the T65 is still very, very, very good and it also has that higher damage resistance. I said it's not as good as percentage-based damage reduction, but it's still gonna be helpful to some extent. So in that regard, don't sleep on the T65. I would say overall, it is still probably better than the Hellcat. Where the Hellcat is really gonna shine 
is in two two instances, I would say. One, when dealing with armor-piercing rounds against enemies like your Mr. Gutsies and also some super mutants, that incoming ballistic damage reduction is really going to help with armor-piercing rounds because it doesn't matter how high your damage resistance is with armor-piercing rounds, they are going to wreck you. So in terms of that, the Hellcat, I believe, will be, will be better, but I will do a proper comparison video at a later stage once I actually get it in the live server. Um, also as well, because of that, in the decryption daily op mode, I think this is where the Hellcat power armor is going to shine because, again, in decryption, the enemies have that mutation where they have armor-piercing rounds. All of them. So having that reduction in ballistic damage is going to be amazing with the Hellcat power armor. So I think that's where it's going to shine. But still, the T-65, I've used it in, in daily ops. It's going to do remarkably well as well. But... In terms of energy resistance and RR, the T-65 for sure is better. So make up your mind. Again, experiment. I will do a comparison video later, later on. But I think the Hellcat is going to be used by some people solely when it comes to, to daily ops, at least decryption for sure. So with that out of the way, let's talk about the mods of the Hellcat power armor. And they're fairly comparable to the T-65 and other power armor. Similar to the T-65, if you want to buy the mods for the uh, Hellcat power armor, you need to have completed Wastelanders and you go to Vault 79 and purchase the plans with Gold Bullion from Regs here. So let's compare, or let's just actually look at the, the mods themselves. And I have some of them bought already. So Cooling Vent, what this does is reduces the drain for your fusion cores, which is nice if you don't like to farm them. Uh, motion assist servos that boosts your strength which is nice it gives you a bit of a carry weight boost as well and then we'll go all the way down to the other ones which are down here and again generally the the mods for this power armor are similar to other ones out there so blood cleanser very quickly and i'll push through all these reduces the chance for addiction from drugs which is nice if you're not a junkie user calibrated shocks I would say is the best, one of the best anyways, because it increases your carry rate capacity and you really need that for power armor, especially because we're not getting unyielding in terms of the legendary effect with still rain. So for sure, have calibrated shocks if you can. Core assembly increases AP refresh speed, really nice for power armor. For bloodied users, your one emergency protocols, it is for sure the best mod out there. When you're below 20% health, your speed increases by 25% and your incoming damage is reduced by 50%. That is massive, massive, especially when you compare all the other reduction of, of damage that I talked about just before. So for sure, have emergency protocols if you are bloodied. Uh, hydraulic uh, braces increases unarmed damage. Internal data brace base increases intelligence, which is nice to increase your XP. Jetpack is just fun to use if you want to use a jetpack. Kinetic Dynamo, taking damage recharges your AP, which is really nice. Kinetic Servos, increases AP refresh speed while moving. That's also really nice. Uh, Medic Pump, detects uh, detect hits during combat and automatically uses a stim pack when your health is low. Generally, I tend to avoid this mod and also the perk card that does a very similar thing. Um, but if you want to do that, for sure, that's all you. Optimized Braces, it reduces AP cost for power attacks if you're using power attacks. And then I'll go all the way down. Optimized servos reduces AP cost for sprinting. This is the exact same effect as the legendary perk card. And I would say that perk card is better, especially if you've ranked it up. So you don't need this one if you have that. But if you want to have it, you can. Overdrive servos increases sprint speed at additional action point cost. I know sprinting in power armor is not that fast, but to be honest, I would just suck it up. And there are better mods out there versus uh, overdrive servos for sure. Reactive plates reflects 50% of melee damage back on the attacker. That's really nice for ghouls and other enemies like that. Recon sensors, sighted aiming marks enemies with a compass pip. Rusty knuckles, unarmed attacks cause bleeding damage. Sensor array increases perception. I would say increasing intelligence is more important, but um, you do you. Stealth boy activates a stealth field while crouched. I would say don't be using stealth in a power armor. There's better armor out there for that. Uh, targeting HUD. Visor highlights living targets. I really like targeting HUD. That's something that, you know, really makes en enemies much easier to see for sure. Tesla braces adds energy, energy damage to unarmed attacks. Uh, let me move all the way down. We're almost done. Uh, and then Tesla coils deals energy damage to nearby enemies. And the VATS matrix overlay increases your VATS hits chance. And that's about it. That is all the Hellcat, and then it's all like the Pepper Shaker, which is the new weapon I talked about in the other video. And that's pretty much it. That covers the Hellcat power armor from head to toe. I pushed through those mods because there's a lot, and I don't want this video to be too long. So let's get to the conclusion of the video. Alrighty, Way Senders, that's all from me. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And until next time, this has been the Lone Vault Wanderer. Please take care of yourselves, and would you kindly keep fighting the good fight.